Okay, um, assalamu alaikum and good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever you are. So for today, um, obviously, this is based on everyone's request that um, they want to know exactly uh, how we do multi-time frame analysis on entries, where we where we put our TP points and our stop losses and stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> so this is uh, obviously a much more in-depth of what you have already learned in the basics because basics is more on how you identify signals and set up. Okay, so this is much more on when you have identified all of those things, then how do you do entry the market? Okay, so first of all, as I always mention to everybody that um, when you when you want to start trading forex you need to be able to have um, some sort of preparations because trading forex is not uh, a hobby or something like that you need to be much more professional in a way that you have prepared everything uh, in accordance to what you're trying to achieve okay because when you don't set your goals you don't know where you're going and if you don't know where you're going at this particular uh, business or forex trading, then it's much more on the gambling side of things. Okay, so what I usually um, ask everybody that if you haven't have any some sort of um, money management um, system that uh, you have in place, then I highly suggest that you do because if you don't plan anything then you're not really trying to achieve anything else so you don't know how to gauge your achievements so far okay so I just covered the, the one on the side so let me just uh, share this Excel spreadsheet hang on all right so over here on the right hand side um, I have four important things that we need to make sure that we have covered okay because um, if you don't have any set plan set goals and objective then there's no way of gauging your um, achievement so far and you don't know where you're going with this uh, forex trading okay so the most important thing, first of all, is when you do have your basics already at the back of your head, when you know how to identify signals, when you know how to find setups. So most of the time, you're now down to how you enter the market. Because most of the time, when we do enter the market, it doesn't go as we plan. So how are we going to minimize those risks? and at what point do we actually cut our losses okay so I will try to cover all of those today inshallah but the first thing um, that a trader needs to question yourself is you have to de define what particular trader you are okay there are three main uh, type of trader which is um, I think it's, I have it over here okay so there are three main um, types of trader first of all is uh, the scalper which is myself I'm uh, more of a scalper so when you know you're a scalper you need to understand that you're trading on the smallest time frame H1, M15 and M5 and how the market moves on these smaller time frames you need to be able to know how big the market is moving and that will dictate how much you are trying to earn at this particular trade okay so as I put over here if I'm scalping then I should be looking at about 10 pips to 20 pips okay so let's just uh, let's open another chart okay all right, so let's just go to M15, for example. So you need to 
you need to really understand how the M15 uh, market moves. So let's just uh, open it until here. So if you have any ideas of how to pull Fibonacci's and stuff like that, then that will have a good um, a, a good gauge of how you do things. Okay, let's just say over here on this particular bit. Okay, so let me just. Um, okay, so let's just talk about this small box over here. So there's a lot of ways how to pull Fibo, but let's just say I'm just pulling this Fibonacci just to find out where um, the TP is. Okay, so let me just. All right. So if you know for a fact over here is that as a BBMA trader, this is um, extreme, and you have CS Arakuko. So let me just um, mark that for you guys. So, okay, and we have CSAK or CSD in English. Okay, that's much bigger. Okay. So basically, you have extreme, you have uh, CSAK, and now you have uh, re entry. So re entry is the setup that we're looking for. Uh, if you are a scalper. So basically before you even enter the market you need to be able to know how far the market moves. Okay. So let's just say for example that okay from from this point to the from the re entry to this point is about that's about forty pips, okay, to be honest. So usually, let's just go to this side again. Let's just check how far the market moves. That's about 40 points, 40 pips. Okay. From here to the top, that's roughly about, let's find a good sideways. Um, okay, this one's another one. So from here, let's just take the average of about, that's 50 again. Okay, another 60. Okay, that's another 40. So, from top to low BB of M15, that's roughly about 40 to 50 pips. That's why, if you want to be safe, you want to aim for 10 to 20 pips. Okay, for a scalper. So, why did I show that? Um, that's that. Um, how you need to make sure that first of all you need to define what particular trader you are you need to be able to know from how the <coughs> how each particular pairs um yep hang on okay so the first thing is very important because if you define yourself as a scalper then when you do trade when you do trade as a scalping trade then you need to make sure that you're you're monitoring the trade you're not gonna leave the trade uh, uh, session while it's running okay because anything can happen in the smaller time frame because everything happens so quick okay when you do go for intraday trading then you're looking for setups at h4 h1 Okay, so those are the places that you'll be looking for uh, in terms of uh, in, uh, setup. And if you want to be safe, then you you should be aiming about 20 to 40 pips. And when you do go for swing trades, then you'll be looking on the setups of monthly, weekly, and daily. That's about 50 pips above. Okay, so how do you actually define? Um, hang on, uh, somebody's having issue with the sound.
all right so when you actually have uh, set yourself as let's say for example intraday trader you need to make sure that you are able to cater, to cater your trading style in accordance to what you're doing every day. Let's just say, for example, you have your own um, you have your own work. Let's say you're working from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., for example. Then the only time you're going to be trading is at night, and you don't have much time in the day. Then don't bother becoming a scalper because you don't have the time to do all of those things during the day. Okay. But if you're, let's say, that you don't have much time to look at the market uh, throughout the entire week, maybe two or three days in a week that you'll be able to do this, then I suggest that you do it, uh, you go for a swing uh, type of trader. Because when you go for swing trades, obviously the retracements are big and you need much, much better ma uh, margin maintenance. Okay? But all of this. Uh, trading style is based on your own personal um, schedule because you need to be able to make sure that you have the time to actually analyze the market, you have the time to actually monitor how the market is moving and, and so on because you need to know how the economy uh, is doing, is there any news that's going to come, is there any setups available that is against your your previous entry. So when you do go for setups, these setups um, they can be uh, they they can be cancelled by another setup. So you need to be able to make sure that you have the time to analyze the market and maintain your um, your monitoring of the market. So that's why it's very important that you make sure that you know what time is the best time for you to trade and what particular trading style and how much are you trying to achieve in this particular setups that you're going for. If you're going for a M15 re-entry, you do not, um, for example, you do not hope that this is going to go one, 100 to 200 pips because that's not how the market moves. Okay, But if your entry is in a daily entry or an H4 entry, then Obviously, that's a much more uh, rational uh, way of thinking because you know that daily setups might go um, 100 or 200 pips down or up. So you need to make sure that you are going for the setups that caters to your uh, your own time and your own trading style. Okay, do not do not go into setups that is not uh, does not favor your own trading styles. Okay. All right. So now that let's say, for example, uh, this is my own plan. Okay, this is how I do my my trading. I define myself as a scalper because I don't like waiting, and uh, I'm not a very patient person. So I'm more in a uh, high speed end of things. So I will go for lower time frame in instead. For example, okay. So if I know I'm going for scalping, then I should go at H1, M15, and M5. So now, once I know that which time frame I'm going for, then I know my targets. Because now I can I can rationally say to myself that, okay, my target when I do scalping is about 10 to 20 pips. Okay? All right. So, all right. So, let me just um, share this bit over here. So now that I have already have uh, my my um, trading style, my my targets. Now I need to do my money management, which is what I do over on this side. Okay. So basically, let's just say, for example, that I need to set myself a rational target. Okay. So let's just say that I have put a hundred dollars on my account, and I would want to set a target of growth in this um, account. So obviously everyone would want to have profits, okay? So because of my own experience and my own capabilities, I just set myself up for a 20% monthly target because 20% is a much more achievable goal than just setting it up to 100 or 50% because that will, that will put some more pressure on yourself on trying to achieve those bigger targets, okay?
So let's just say I said to myself that, okay, I have $100 and I'm going to set 20% monthly target. So 20% of $100 is about $20, okay? So after one month of trading, that's about 20 days worth of trading, I will need to raise my account to about $120. So in order for me to achieve this target, if you divide that by the number of days that you have on a particular month, you're roughly about, you just, you just need to earn about $1 per day. So by calculating these numbers, by dividing them, by, make, by, by making it much more, um, what do you call this, much more achievable on a daily basis, then it's much more easier for you to achieve a dollar a day because I'm pretty sure that all of you out there will be able to achieve more than this in a particular day. Okay, so let's just say that we want to achieve one dollar a day because that is how we want to grow this account. And by by um, sorry by building this account twenty percent on a monthly basis, you are setting yourself up on a on a slower pace kind of uh, growing your account. However, it's a much more achievable goal and lesser risk in, te in terms of how it will um, affect you uh, mentally and also uh, your psychological in, uh, effect on yourself when you actually push yourself to achieve a bigger goal. So if you set yourself up for a much more achievable goal, then inshallah it's much more easier for you to uh, achieve this stuff, okay? So according to this plan over here, I have $100 and I will only use one sand slot because if you use one sand slot, ultimately at the first, at the back of your head, that if the market goes away from your entry, you can able to sustain about 1,000 pips before you blow out your account. So I'm pretty sure that the market will not do 1,000 pips in a day. So let's just say the market goes away from you, let's say 40 pips, it will retrace again. And when it retraces, that's when you need to decide whether you need to take your profit or you need to cut loss. So that's why it's very important that you maintain your um, margin at 1,000 uh, 1, to 1,500 percent because that will make sure that you don't blow your account and you'll be able to sustain the retracement that the market does and when the when it does that you you are not going to pressure yourself by blowing this account because you know at the back of your head that this account will be able to sustain 1000 pips uh, movement okay so that's risk mitigation over there so if you set yourself up for one cent lot and about 20 pips on a daily target okay because I said Earlier on, I'm going to do scalping on this one. So I set myself up for 20 pips per day. So roughly min minus the spread and all of those stuff, let's just say that we're earning about $2 per day. And that's why we need to create two accounts because this is the grow account. The $100 is the grow account and you have a bank account. The bank account is much more on the on the withdrawals that you're gonna do because you're earning about two dollars per day so you only need to grow your account a dollar a day as we already have calculated earlier on okay so if you earn about two dollars a day then one dollar will go to the withdrawal to goes to the bank account and the other dollar goes to your capital okay so if you do this every day for the rest of the month then obviously you're just trying to earn 20 pips a day, which I'm pretty sure everyone will be able to do, okay? So you eventually will raise your capital to about $120, which is your 20% target. And without even noticing it, you're also having uh, an extra $20 in your bank account because of the withdrawals that you did. And this, you add on to your capital right now that's about $140 so without realizing what you have achieved 
you actually achieve more than 20%. That's about 40% growth on your account. But what you need to put in your mind is that you just need to make sure that you have a dollar a day on your particular entry. Okay? So let's just say that. Okay, let's, um, let's open this one over here. All right? Let's just say that um, you entry sell at this particular, let me find a good setup over here. Okay. Let's just say you entry sell at this particular setup over here. Okay, let me just... All right. So let's just say that we sell over this place, okay? So when the market move, because obviously this is an H1 setup, but obviously this is a re-entry sell for H4. So let me go to H4. There it is, the re-entry sell for H4, okay? So we go back to H1. So basically, this is a setup for an H4 re-entry sell, okay? So it's much more on an intraday type of trading, but we're still going to scalp based on this intraday uh, entry, okay? So let's just say the market goes down after you have sold it for about, that's about 10 pips over there, okay? So after it went to 20 pips, what you need to make sure that you do is that you lock your entries at half of at your um, target okay so when you reach your target of about 20 pips for example sorry because your daily target is about 10 pips then you lock it at 10 pips once the market has already gone down more than 20 pips okay so you lock it at 10 pips and you let it roll for a while okay so even if the market goes back to these 10 pips during this few hours then you know you have already achieved your daily target okay hang on let me just somebody's ha having issue all right so once the market has moved again for another 30 pips for example then then it's time to move your stop loss to about 20 pips so now your daily targets is already achieved because okay so now you already have achieved your daily targets okay and after this CSR Akoko based on BBMA you have a re-entry over here once that re-entry, when it reaches low BB, when you don't have any more momentum, that's already a signal that tells you that you need to make sure that the lower time frame doesn't have an opposite setup because you will know that there will be a reversal. Okay, so when you don't have any more momentum, you should be you should be uh, aware of this because this is a sideways BB. Sideways BB, obviously, when a candle rejects or breaks low BB, it will have uh, opposite uh, movement towards middle BB. So that's very important. So now, from your entry point to this point over here, that's about 60 pips. That's more than that you that you would want it to have on your uh, entry on a daily basis. Okay. So when the market moves, let's say that's about 60 pips over there, then you can actually have move it to your CSR Akuko, to be honest. Okay, so that's about, let's just say, for example, 40 pips. So it's very important for a trader to obviously always lock your profits because the market is volatile at some point and obviously you need to make sure at what particular time of the day the market opens okay and this is very important because that's when there's a big um, big market movement okay however that's not the point today that I want to make today 
what I want to make sure that you all know exactly when to enter the market and when to get out of it okay so if you have no idea how to get out of the market then based on this plan you already have set yourself a target so we shouldn't be greedy in terms of um, what we're trying to achieve on a daily basis is what we need to make sure is we achieve our own targets okay so let's just say uh, H1 is on a sideways BB and you have uh, the first candle over here rejected the low BB so you need to make sure at M15 <clears throat> that there is no opposite setup okay for example over here okay so as soon as I have seen uh, CSD <coughs> okay candle rakuko buy at M15 then I know for a fact that okay I think I need to get out of this trade because I'm a scalper then as a scalper if you have an opposite signal that tells you there's about to have a new setup then you have to be careful okay because H1 tells you that this is a sideways BB okay so sideways BB obviously the market's gonna go back to middle BB so that is one thing that you need to be able to um, to analyze yourself and another thing about that is after the re-entry at H4 there is no momentum at this point so that's another giveaway over there that tells you that the market might change okay because right now there is no momentum at um, low BB after the re-entry okay so that's uh, one of the first uh, um, indications of uh, market reversal because um, if you check uh, the channel, uh, my channel, I already talked about uh, dodges and stuff like this. Uh, so the dodgy formation at the end of the market, that's, those are the things that actually um, have uh, early signals that tell you that there's a market reversal that's going to happen. Okay, so it's good to know uh, some of these things as well. All right, <clears throat> so... Uh, let's go back to the daily target so now we have already set our money management and we already have set our plan our daily targets and obviously the most important thing on trading is basically the discipline because you need to make sh sure that you discipline yourself in terms of what you're trying to achieve okay and if the market does not go as to your plan then you should be able to adjust based on that okay so let's just say this is the um, the market uh, that you entry and after CSR Kuku, you can pull your Fibonacci and you know that it has achieved TP1 so based on the scalper for me from re-entry point to TP1 that's about 20 pips to be honest so let's just say that the entry is over there so that's about 20 to 30 pips okay so that's one of the good things of having other techniques to help you filter out your entries okay but what you need to understand that if you're scalping then you should base it on scalping you should always lock your profits at the end of the day because that even if you lock your profit at five pips that is still a positive entry okay you do not let the market ruin your plan and if it doesn't go as per your plan you should know when to get out of this market okay all right so that's the um, discipline part of it because when you do entry when it goes away from you then you should have a set plan for example okay let's just go to this entry again so when this, when this entry happen okay then you are confident that the mark the price is going to go up however let's just say for example that the Bollinger Band goes up and the next candle become a momentum CSM so when the next candle becomes CSM then you need to decide what is it uh, what's gonna happen after that so before you decide cutting your loss you need to make sure that you know what the market is trying to do okay for example over here alright let's just say that you sell on this particular point and you know that it's gonna go down 
However, the market did not do this uh, particular movement. So how do you bail out of this particular trade? So you don't just bail out when the market goes away from you. You need to make sure that you have a set plan. So you need to be able to assess what the market is trying to do. Based on basic BBMA, let's just say Bollinger Band basics, that its main function is to contain all the candles and moving averages within the Bollinger Band. Over here, you have two extremes. You have a candle that's outside of the Bollinger Band and you have moving average outside of the Bollinger Band. So obviously, you know for a fact that is going to go sideways, okay? Because f in order for the Blinger Band to put back the candles inside the Blinger Band, then the candles need to go sideways. Hence, there is a giveaway over here that tells you that the market is being stopped moving upwards because it needs to go sideways. And when the market goes sideways, you need to understand that it is creating a re-entry, okay? So if you want to bail out of this sell entry because this candle over here is another signal. It tells you that this is the first CSM and every first CSM will create a re-entry and that's a very uh, big giveaway over here. You're on the wrong end of the entry and then there's a CSM buy over here so you can either cut loss over here or you want to make uh, an assessment on your lower time frame for example. This is H1 so let's just go for this particular bit over here. So we go to M15 and we look. Sorry, where is it? Okay. So we look at M15 and we know there's a MHB setup over here. Okay. So MHB setup, obviously your entry is over here. And usually MHB, they always aim for middle BB. So as you can see over here, your entry is roughly just above middle B, just below middle BB. So you know the market is going to retrace to middle BB or maybe low BB. But SOP based on MHB entry, when you entry sell at MHB, your first TP should be at middle BB. If the market rejects middle BB, that's when you should cut your losses or take your profit because Rejecting middle BB, this is a re-entry buy in another sense because now, as you can see over here, this candle has rejected MA, MA5 low, MA10 low, and middle BB. And based on basic BBMA, this entry over here, this re-entry candle over here, this is a minimum of three candles up, okay? So as you can see from this re-entry, the market has moved more than three candles Okay, so if you're going sell on this particular juncture, you need to make sure that when you see this, that is when you need to decide that, okay, I need to cut my loss at this particular juncture. Because from your entry point, that's about, okay, that's about 13 pips, 12 pips. So you just lost about a dollar twenty cents. Okay, so if you're earning about 20 pips per day, $2 a day, I'm pretty sure that whatever you have, whatever you have, um, gain from the past few days obviously can sustain any small losses that you do because the most important thing over here is to minimize your loss and maximize your profit okay so is there any um, when it comes to the planning wise and setting your targets money management and discipline is there any question before I move on to how we do our identification of market opportunity analyzing the market, setting up yourself for the entry, and obviously the maintenance of the entry. Okay, so Hassan was asking, uh, what do I mean by 1,000%? Okay, what I meant by 1,000% is the margin uh, of your entry. So if your if your entry, uh, 
if your uh, margin is above 1,000 percent, then you have a buffer of uh, security in terms of um, sustaining the market movement. So as I as I say in this example that if I have a hundred dollars and I'm only trading one cents on a particular day, then obviously is even how big the market movement on a day is not going to move more than one thousand pips. So I'm pretty sure that you know I'm not going to let the market move away from me uh, with that uh, bigger number. Okay. So what in what I'm trying what what do you call this? What I'm trying to tell you is that you need to make sure that when you trade, you do not put lots that will jeopardize your your um, your money. Okay, so you only trade with uh, smaller amounts to make sure that you have smaller loss and the risk is not as big as it, as it is. Because for me as a trader, I do have two types of trading. One is as what I'm showing to you right now, and the other one is high risk, high reward. So high risk, high reward, I'm not going to teach you right now because what I'm trying to teach everybody now is to come up with your own plan as what I'm showing right now and be consistent at at uh, on it first because the main game over here is about consistency okay so when you're able to maintain consistent uh, flow of um, pips per day let's just say you're you're constantly earning about 10 pips per day and that is already for me a very good uh, successful trader because you don't need to become a millionaire over a period of few days okay this is not this is not a sprint okay this is a, a marathon you need to do this very slow and very controlled manner and you need to be able to make sure that you uh, minimize your risk in terms of identifying the market and how you enter the market so there's a lot of ways how to trade but what I'm showing to you right now is a set plan that is very achievable and another thing about this is it's you're taking a lesser risk and a much more achievable goal okay 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 why is it better to open multiple position with smaller lot size versus one big lot size okay so um, I'm pretty sure that basically this is much more this is much more on how you see the the Southeast Asian crowd trader uh, versus the European uh, and the American side trading style because based on the European, American and the rest of the world, most of them just put big lots at one particular place. And when you go to Southeast Asia, you go to Malaysia, Brunei, they go crazy with smaller lots with lots of entries. Okay. So what's what's the what's the good thing about it and what's the bad thing about it? Okay. So it's all to be honest, it's to be honest, if you know that you're entering at the pinnacle of the entry, then you should put just one big lot at that pinnacle uh, entry, and then th when there's a new re-entry that that uh, on the market, then you should entry another lot. Okay. So what everyone is doing right now is they're bombing with smaller entries. At the end of the day, it's going to be still the same. However, the the risk that you're taking on the smaller lots is much more lesser but when you go for bigger lots then you have a bigger risk however you're only managing one big risk according to a lot of entries and then you need to be able to sustain the market when the market goes away from you so to be honest um, as of I see it right now you should pace yourself do not do not be amazed of what everyone is doing what you can see on the screenshots of profits and entry what you should be thinking about right now is what suits you best okay this is not about how you're gonna show it to the rest of the world but at the end of the day 
what you're trying to achieve is money that you will feed your family. It's not something that you will show to everybody that I am great. Okay? It's not about being great. It's about earning money. And what I'm showing to you right now is you should pace yourself, you should manage your entries, and you should minimize your risk. Because based on that, then you should be able to become a, a much more successful trader. Okay? So if you have seen a lot of entries like that, that is based on everyone's experience. And based on their experience level and their confidence level, that's, that's something that you should learn on your own. It's not something that people can transmit to you uh, in a way. Okay? So I, I, should, I highly suggest that if you're a new trader and you want to be successful and you want to be consistent, because that's the key word over there, consistency. Because regardless, you win 100 today, at the end of the week, you lost 300. It's not going to be worth it anyways, okay? So what we're trying to do here is to earn small bit by bit every day. It's not something that you want to win one uh, on one day and then you lost everything at the end of the week. So we need to be we need to be able to make sure that we are aiming for something uh, with consistency. Okay, because if you want to earn on forex trading, then consistency is the most important thing that you need to do. And without discipline, that's that's uh, you're not gonna get any more. Con uh, you're not gonna get close to consistency, because as everyone has been telling me, all the gurus that I have, um, Faisal, Farid Adenan, he's more on discipline because technique is just 10% of trading. Discipline is the much more important uh, aspect of trading. Okay, so let me go. Let me just go through the chat box over here. Uh, Okay, Scott was asking that if someone is a full-time trader, is it uh, realistic to aim a bit higher than 20%? Well, to be honest, the, the monthly target is based on your own capability. If you know you can achieve more than 20%, then you should set yourself for that. But what you need to set yourself is a goal or a target that you are able to achieve and you're more comfortable with. Do not set your targets more than what you are usually doing because that will give a pressure on yourself. And when you are pressured, then that's when you start going to lose. And when you lose, you get more frustrated, you get more pressured, and eventually you'll blow your account. So my my own system is if I lose two trades in one particular day, I will stop everything. I wouldn't even trade. I'm just going to look at the market and and refresh at the night, find out where I went wrong, and then refresh again on the next day. Okay? So that's very important. So you don't force yourself to, to win trades on a daily basis because at the end of the day, it's not about... It's not about gaining every day because not every day you're gonna you're gonna win your trades unless you have already consistency on identifying your setups. This is the much more important thing that I'm going to talk about on the next one. Okay, so let's move on. So first of all, we need to identify possible market opportunity. Okay, so let's just say I'm a trader and tomorrow is Monday, so you need to make sure that you already done your homework before the trading day, okay? So you need to be able to project where the market is going and you need to be able to know and decide what, what happens when the market as your, uh, at your um, zones of selling or buying. So I will try to do that um, in this uh, session. So if anybody would want to as uh, maybe suggest any pairs that you would want me to look at, at in terms of um, possible possible market opportunity. So I leave it up to you guys to give me a suggestion. Anthony UJ, okay, okay. So let's go to 
let me just put this to the side. Okay, EU, USD, SHF. Okay, let's just go to UJ first, okay? All right. Okay. All right, so UJ. Okay, so I will try to um, do this slowly, but obviously this is a recorded session, so you guys can just go through. So regardless, I'm a I'm a scalper intraday or a swing trader. I usually do my analysis uh, from the very biggest uh, time frame. Okay, so I will specifically go to monthly first. So I would know what's happening on a monthly time frame. So on a monthly time frame, what I can see is obviously um, a sell setup at the beginning of um, over here. So you have CSD, you have MHB, you have CSD, and you have CSM. And then CSM, you didn't have any re-entries at all. And obviously you have uh, re-entry and CSD over here. So right now, as I can see it, this is much more on a selling uh, area because of this particular setup over here. So for me, this is a big giveaway because this is now what we call um, bearish engulfing. So if you have a bearish engulfing on a bigger time frame, then you know the smaller time frame is going to follow uh, the direction of this market. Okay. So I highly suggest that you Google if you don't know uh, about bearish engulfings. Okay, so we know for a fact that the monthly is a bearish engulfing and you have a candlestick direction, okay? So let's go to weekly in terms of this market. So on a weekly time frame, you have um, uh, MHB and then you have uh, CSD as well, and you have CSM, and then there's a possibility of re-entry over at this point, okay? So, all right. So we know that the market is going because we have a strong sell signal over here that tells us that the market is going down, regardless of the MA is outside of the blinker band, okay? So we go to daily, then what we see on daily is there's a giveaway over here. There's a lot of information that I can see, obviously. First of all, that you have an extreme buy. You have, um, obviously, uh, TP Wajib, and then the market goes down. Then you have the first candle that couldn't break low BB. So this is what we call the second um, condition of MHB because Okay, let me just write this down. So, MHB or MLB, okay? So, MHB and MLB condition, the first thing that you need to understand is, one, you have to have an extreme, okay? And then, two, you have to have a CS that couldn't break BB, all right? So that is this candle over here. It couldn't manage to break the low BB. And then soon after that, you at the next candle there you have a reverse candle. Okay. Okay. So that's the third one. And finally, now we have once we do have these two pair, the candle couldn't break low BB, and you have a reverse candle. You need to mark the lowest body. Okay. When you mark the lowest body, is obviously on the lowest point. Um, so I just mark this blue so I know for a fact that this is a buy zone. Okay. All right. So let's just say that this is the MHB over here, and then you have a reverse candle. Any candles that goes through here is a buy entry because this is an MHB retest. So this is the fourth condition. Okay. Characteristics of uh, MHB. So obviously right now you have a second retest at this particular point. So the second retest also tells us that there's another story over here because now you know this is a sideways BB and you have 
a sideways Bollinger Band. So this candle rejects low BB. So based on basic BBMA, it's going to go to middle BB. And at the top over here, you have another giveaway that tells you that MA50 is outside of the Bollinger Band. So when MA50 is outside of the Bollinger Band of a particular time frame, it tells you that it is setting up for a re-entry for this instance it's above middle BB so it's a re-entry cell on a much more higher time frame which is weekly so as I said earlier on we know for a fact that there's a possibility of a re-entry cell over here so if re-entry cell is on weekly then obviously we need to find out the retracement levels of uh, this market okay so okay so if I want to find out the retracement level I usually go for the third time frame or even up to H1, for example, okay, because I can't find anything over here. So let's just go to uh, H4, for example. Okay, H4 is also indicating a reversal over here. You have a dodgy reversal and you have an MHB as well, okay. So now we go to H1. So H1 uh, can provide me with uh, much more better um, in terms of Fibonacci because you have a support level over here and you have a uh, 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 bullish engulfing at this particular point. So you have a bullish engulfing and obviously this is the support at which most probably the retracement will be going for, okay? Because this candle over here breaks this support, okay? So this is for a fact that this is a bearish engulfing, okay? So obviously the market will go here and this should have been a selling area. However, this candle breaks through and also break middle BB. So when it managed to do that, this resistance point has now become a, a, again a support because at the very beginning this point was actually a support and the market breaks through over here and it becomes a resistant. Unfortunately, it goes back up and it breaks back and there's a SNR flip again. Okay. So the possibility of uh, reversal is over here again. Uh, sorry, retracement. So let me just pull my Fibonacci because based on my Fibonacci, there are three ways of pulling your Fibonacci. The first is obviously if you have um, bear, uh, bearish or bullish engulfing. So if you're, you have a bullish engulfing or, uh, or any engulfing, then you should find the nearest support. So the nearest support is obviously this one. So you pull it from the body and to the wick of the lowest point. So let me just color this um, blue. So we know that this is a buy FIBO. All right. So you can use your basic Fibonacci to be honest. You don't have to follow the, the, set, the settings that we have here. So I actually said earlier on, right now the market has returned going to the pullback. Okay, so obviously this support is roughly about the, on the max retracement. So what we have over here is obviously a zone at which the market is trying to go for. Okay. Okay, let me just um, draw this a background. Okay. All right. So let's just say that this is the zones at which the market is heading for. Okay. So now we have already analyze the smaller time frame are trying to go up because over here we know there is no momentum you have a CSD and you have a possible re-entry buy over here H4 as well you have extreme and you have an MHB as well and you have a strong dodgy that tells you I forgot the name of this um, dodgy but obviously this is a very strong dodgy over here that tells you the reversal and obviously daily also tells you that this is a sideways BB and there's a potential of the market going to middle BB or top BB. Okay? Because it has been for a few days now, few weeks that the market hasn't gone back to MA50 because based on BBMA, the market has to go back to MA50 at some point. Okay? This is a natural, uh, natural uh, cause of things because when we are using BBMA, we are um, technical traders. So we, we base it on things and facts of how the market has, got, has done before. So basically we are, we are predicting the market where it's heading based on um, patterns of what had happened before. And based on this, uh, based on the back test that we did, 
MA50 is one of the lines in BBMA that tells you that the market is going to go there at some point. Okay. So over here we know for a fact that this is um, extreme B, which is uh, sideways BB, and it might go to middle BB or top BB at some point. Okay. We're not really sure. Okay. But right now H4 is already MHB and H1 has already have a candlestick direction and there's a potential of a re-entry buy at this point. Okay. So now we go back to uh, daily. So we know for a fact that this is the point at which the TP1 is roughly at that point and TP2 is at that point. Okay, and the full cycle of this Fibonacci is obviously at top BB. Okay, so when we go to um, the weekly time frame, then there's a possibility of the market um, going to TP2 and TP3. However, what we can see for a fact over here is basically the candles on the weekly time frame is already going sideways. Okay, so this is a strong indication of uh, how things are going uh, too. Okay, so when you do have a uh, um, the the weekly going sideways, then obviously over here there's a sequence that hasn't happened yet. Okay, obviously there's no re-entry over at uh, the first CSM over here. So there is a possibility of a re-entry forming up at weekly. Hence the the setups, the buy setups on the lower time frame. So if you know that the lower time frame is going up for a selling uh, point at which on the weekly time frame, then this is a good point for you to understand which particular trader you are. Because if you're a scalper and you're an intraday trader, then obviously you would want to go buy on this market and then once you reach to that certain level of the market, then that's when you're going to sell. Okay. So based on this weekly, okay, you we know for a fact that there is a support line um, over here. Okay. For example, so let's just say this is the weekly time frame, and it has been sideways for a while, and this is a support line. And right now, this support line has been broken through over here, and at some point, the market might try to go and test this uh, support again and now it will become another resistance a new resistance for example okay so knowing uh, by by um, combining BBMA support resistance and Fibonacci it will actually help you to uh, have a much more um, understanding of what the market is trying to do and you can have much more better of um, uh, market planning and also uh, mapping of where the market is going okay so let's just say for example that this is the this is the zone at which that is uh, now the the support zone and then it is broken through over here there's a breakout and this is a possible selling area on a much more higher time frame which is weekly so based on this weekly time frame this is a uh, more on a swing type of trading okay but if I'm if I'm a scalper, then obviously I'll be looking into a buy entry over here because I know the market is going up. So we need to make sure that whatever is happening on the lower time frame as well, we need to identify um, those setups as well. So if I'm a scalper, then obviously I'll be looking on a setup on H1, M15, M5. If I'm a intraday trader, then obviously I'll go for the re-entry. Uh, sorry, the MHB entry at H4, okay? Because I know the market is trying to go to middle BB of daily, for for example, okay? So these are the things that you need to do uh, in order to um, to identify the possible market opportunity. And then what we did just now is the analyzing of the market. And now, since we already know where the market is going, where we are predicting the market is going, then we need to set ourselves up. So let's just say um, I'm a scalper. So based on this scalping, then I should be looking at a setup on on H4. Ah, uh, sorry, H1. So H1 has something uh, to offer. Obviously, you have an MHP over here. You have a candlestick direction, and obviously, you might have a re-entry buy at middle BB at this point because this is also uh, to the support levels of H1, and you have the pullback area as well. So. Basically, if I want to go uh, for the buy, so it should be around that area over there. So now, if I know this is a buy zone, okay, let me just, um, 
Okay, this is based on scalping. Okay, so if I'm if I'm going for scalping on this and I'm going for a buy entry because these are support levels and there's a breakout and another breakout and now it has become another support. So based on this um, entry, then I would look for uh, MHB setup or an extreme at this particular juncture. So right now we have uh, MHB, uh, sorry, we have a uh, sell MHB over here and you have the market going down. So if the market's going down over here, I would go to M5 for uh, confirmation okay, of where the market is going. So what I want to do is I can still use my Fibonacci as well. So basically this is also an ABC type of um, pulling the Fibonacci. Let me just go for M15. Okay, M15, there's um, this is the biggest candle. This is dominant candle. And then the, for dominant candles, what you need to do, so basically this is the dominant candle. So the dominant candles, uh, when you need to pull the Fibonacci, you need to have at least a minimum of three candles. Then you can pull it from the, the candle that actually breaks the body. Okay, so this is the dominant candle. So this candle actually breaks this dominant candle. So what you can do is you can pull the Fibonacci from that side. And I'm just going to color it, uh, let's say, yellow. I know it's pretty, pretty, um, there's a lot of things happening here. But OK, so basically, I already drew the H1 time frame uh, Fibonacci, uh, sorry, support and levels over there. And what I did over there is I pulled M15 retracement. So M15 tells me that TP1 of sell is over here. So there are three things that's telling me uh, that I should buy over there at this place. Okay. So the first thing is this is a support resistance. So this is another support area. Second thing that I have an MHB, uh, CSD, and also a possible re-entry at middle BB. That's BBMA. And now I pulled Fibonacci at M15. Then it tells me that TP1 is also at this point. So this there's a lot of things happening over here and obviously at the H1 by FIBO we also have this as the area of a pullback so there's a lot of things telling me that okay I should buy at this point so let's just say for example that tomorrow on Monday the markets over here and you want to buy what you need to make sure that if you want to buy at this particular point is that at M5, because I'm scalping, at M5, I need to have an MHP buy over here. So that will be a much more safer entry for me. Because when we do entry, the market is not based on support and resistance level. Because we don't want to go for the, the pinnacle of the entry. What we need to do is we need to entry the market at which point it's much more safer for us. And when I talk about MHB, Usually MHB, the market is already sideways. So when it's sideways, there's no momentum. Because when you entry against a momentum, that's a much more higher risk. When the market is sideways, then you know if there's an opposite CSM, then you can cut loss at the minimal risk. Let's just say tomorrow that I want to do a scalping at this particular point. And over here at TP1, at the pullback support and resistance, I want to buy for H1 re-entry buy. Okay? I want to buy over here. But over here, I have an MHB buy. Then I entry buy over here. At some point, it has become a CSM. So when it becomes CSM, then I should question myself that what's happening at M15 and what's happening at H1. If H1 becomes CSAK, um, CSD sell, then I should understand that maybe this is going for sell again because the majority of the time frame is obviously a sell because MA50 is above middle BB because you're going against the market at this point but you need to make sure when you cut loss so when you do cut loss is when you have a candlestick direction sell at H1 okay but obviously we need to make sure that we don't upgrade our entries based on this okay so when we have our entries and we knew we need to make sure that we need to be able to know what the market is trying to do. So we just don't use the hoping technique instead. Okay.
so let me just look at the questions that we have over here. Um, set of sleeping bar hammer. Okay. All right. Okay. So basically, on H1 time frame, the reason why we want to enter at this particular juncture is obviously you have a CSD buy and you have a pot potential re-entry buy. That was our analysis over this one. And basically, based on H4, in order for H4 to go up, it has to have a setup at H1. In order for daily to have a, uh, to go up, then H4 has to have a setup and H1 has to have a setup as well. So basically, what this is the the starting point at which we need to enter for the daily MHB to be honest. So if you want to go for intraday trading, then your entry should be based on daily. So when your entry is on intraday, or okay, so your cut loss should be when there's a CSM at daily. So when there's CSM at daily, then that's when you need to cut loss. That's the condition at which you should cut loss, okay? But if I'm a scalper, if I know there's a CSD, a candlestick direction, CS Rakuko, then I know I have to make sure that I bail out of this because it's going to go down again. Because when you're, when you're talking about uh, retracement on a daily basis, it's going to go up to 60 pips, 50 pips, for example. Okay? So these are the things that you need to understand. What particular entry, what particular trading type are you using? So that's, that will determine how much uh, retracement you're going to go. Okay, so let's just say, for example, that on Monday, this becomes, let's say I entry buy over here on M5 MHB buy. All of a sudden, it becomes CS Arakuku sell. You do, not, you do not go out of the trade as soon as possible, okay? Because what you need to make sure is you need to validate this CS Arakuku. Is this valid or not? Okay, so there's a lot of ways to um, validate this. First of all, you need to be able to see uh, on a higher time frame whether the CSR Kuku is actually a re-entry buy or probably there's a, a buy setup on a much more smaller time frame. So there's a lot of things on how you um going to uh, manage all of this. But what I'm trying to do over here is I don't want to um, to confuse everybody, okay? So let me just delete all of this Fibonacci rectangle. Okay. Uh, oh my goodness. I think I deleted everything. All right. Okay. So right now, as I said, you know, based on this, sometimes the lesser indicators we have, the much more clearer that we can see. But I already have narrowed down to this particular point at which we're going to go for buy, for example, okay? So if I want to sell, I already know that basically this is the point at which I'm going to sell because of the support levels that it has done on the previous um, um, time, okay? So the weekly is going at that particular point, okay? And based on this weekly time frame, there's also another giveaway that tells you that MO50 is just about to cross over on uh, top uh, above middle BB, so that's a confirmation of a trend change over there. So this weekly will become zero loss sell. Zero loss sell is based on MA50 above middle BB, and all the moving averages are within the sell zone, because the sell zone is between middle BB and low BB, and the buy zone is between middle BB and top BB. These are all basic stuff. Okay, so what you need to understand is you need to make sure that based on your, um, what do you call this, based on your analysis, you need to always make sure that you stick to the basics, okay? Because sometimes basics is actually a lot powerful than you actually thought. All right, so that's UJ. Um, that's, it took a lot, uh, it took a while, but that's how I usually do uh, my analysis is based on is based on a lot of things. I start from the monthly. I want to make sure where this market is heading on a, on a longer time frame and what is it trying to do. So let me just quickly re-talk um, about on what we have already achieved, okay? So basically, on the monthly time frame just now, we have identified that there is um, bearish engulfing on this top, uh, particular uh, month. And in the weekly time frame, we know this is going to be a zero loss sell. 
and there's a potential of creation of re-entry at the support level which becomes a resistance over here and to support that re-entry sell over here the market has to go up so in order for the market to go up you need to have setups on the lower time frame which tells us right now that there's an MHB buy at daily okay MA50 is also outside the blinger band so usually when you have this uh, two things at, it tells you that there's a possibility of setting up of uh, re-entry at a higher time frame which is weekly H4 also dictates that there's a potential of uh, reversal because there's an MHB as well and there's a strong indication of a uh, dodgy over here I will find out what particular dodgy name is this but as long as the dodgy I'm pretty sure that you know we can use this as a, in, as a reversal indicator and obviously at H1 we have already identified that there's a potential support zones at which we can go for the buy entry so that is how we I narrow down all of these things but because I'm a scalper I want to go down to the minimum which is uh, H1, M15 and M5 so because I want to go for the H1 re-entry buy so I need to go to M15 and find out the retracement level so uh, I need to find out where this mark is going so I, I pulled the FIBO based on TP1 that's exactly where the H1 uh, re-entry uh, sorry H1 buy FIBO also goes for fullback and also M15 TP1 so and based on the fact that it's actually landed on the support itself so there's a lot of things that you can use to solidify your analysis so when you do have your analysis then now it's just a waiting game so when the market opens when the market is already at the pot potential zone of your buy zone then you need to wait for the setups at which time frame you should enter so if I'm a scalper I'll go for MHB buy at M5 if I'm an intraday trader then I would probably wait until M um, H1 M15 but if I'm a swing trader then my entries should be based on daily okay so that's you Jay it took a lot of time but inshallah I hope that it was helpful in a way so what else can we talk about okay so now we have identified the possible market we have already anal analyzed and we already have set uh, for which particular setup we are going to entry and based on the entry let's say for example UJ I want to go for M5 um, entry so that's a scalping type of trading so I would aim for 10 to 20 pips and lock my profits at that particular juncture so usually people have uh, found it hard when to actually uh, lock your profits so for me as long as I can lock my profit as soon as the market does its retracement okay so let's just say for example that I have bought the market at this point okay so I will never lock my my entry over here when the market goes up because I know it's gonna retrace back uh, eventually so what I need to do is sometimes I usually use about 20 pips when the market goes to 20 pips I will lock it about 10 okay and sometimes when the market already retraced back to the potential support and resistance so let's just say for example that this is the support level that we're going to another buy entry so when this thing happen and then when the market goes up again that's when I actually lock my positions over here because I know this has already been tested so I would probably lock it about 30 pips for example sorry about 20 pips over there so that's when the market goes up and that's when I will lock the market uh, the entry because I know this uh, retracement has already been done so you don't you don't put your uh, your uh, lock right next to the support because that is a jeopardy to you so for me because this is the lowest that he has tested so I would make sure that my my stop loss should be somewhere around here lower than this so that's about maybe five pips for example to be to start with so that's about five pips so you should you should do this in a in a much more rational way because you know that the support and resistance levels are the point at which the market's gonna go back. So when you should uh, when you do this, then you should be able to um, um, know when to put your your stop loss plus or your break even. 
So people always ask me when do I cut loss? When do I put my stop loss? To be honest, I have never put the stop loss unless I'm going to sleep. Okay? So when I enter the market over here, let's say for example, I want to buy at this particular market. Let's say the market goes down, I will not cut loss until there's a CSM sell. So CSM sell, you can define it when the candle has closed. Until the candle has closed, that's when your decision should be made. It's not something that you can put physically because BBMA is based on dynamic um, indicators. Because all the moving averages, even the Bollinger Bands are dynamic. If you are a support and resistance trader, then it's based on support and resistance. They are more on uh, static um, static indicators. Okay, so BBMA is much more on dynamic, so you need to make sure that the candle has closed. Okay, let's uh, take a quick five minute break and then after five minutes we'll look into another market inshallah.
Okay, um, shall we continue? So, um, my uh, my teacher, also one of the teachers I have here uh, together with us is uh, Radin. So he's here with us as well. So he's much more on uh, support and resistance uh, type of uh, technical trading. So he suggested that uh, we look into GU for next week. Let's just see. All right. So um, before we um, we uh, continue, is there any question with regards to um, everything that uh, I have covered earlier on in terms of um, the plans and um, how you define uh, define uh, setting up your targets, money management? even how to set yourself up for the market entry. Is there any uh, questions? So I'll just open it up for Another uh, five minutes for questions, just in case that uh, is there anyone that requires um, some stuff. Okay, so Azman was asking the function of MA50 in monthly is to define the major trend. Do you also need to consider in lower TF? Okay, so the function of MA50 is based on each particular time frame. It's not just on the monthly time frame, it's not just on weekly, it's based on each particular time frame. So if I'm looking at, uh, let's say, for example, that, uh, let's say, M H1 at this particular juncture, okay? So on H1, you have M50 going above middle BB. That's an indication of uh, a sell zone, okay? But over here, as we can see, that uh, this is an uptrend because M50 is below BB. And whenever there's an extreme at the region of the M50, there's potential um, uh, buy setup on a much more high time frame. For example, that... Um, there is an extreme over here. There's also an extreme at lower BB. And there's also another extreme over here. Okay. So these are um, in H1. So basically, when I look at H4, they, these are uh, set up on H4 re entry buy. Okay. So when we look at H4, so basically, these are the re entry buys that uh, we look into earlier on. Okay. So as you can see over there. So these are indications that we have. So right now, I'm just jumping to to it. So right now we have this extreme over here on um, H4, okay? So basically on H4, we have this. And we have a dominant candle over here. Let's just see what where, what it tells me. So basically, this has gone to the TP1 already, okay? So it already has tested this particular support zone. So this is actually a point of which um, support and resistance uh, trading uh, traders uh, have actually entered their buy entries because of uh, the potential uh, support zone over here because this has become a resistance and then there's a breakout and then this is the retest, okay? So let's just say, for example, that um, this is the initial resistance point, and this uh, sorry, this breakout resist uh, the support becomes a resistance over here. It has become resistance for a while, and then there's a breakout. Then the breakout there's a potential buy entry over there. So this is uh, actually a buy entry for H4 because of the re-entry buy at daily, as you can see over there. Okay, so. 
even at the smaller time frame, we can actually identify uh, all of these setups. But over here, as um, uh, my teacher um, Raden has told us that uh, we can be looking for uh, by setups at GU for next week. So if I go to, usually I go for monthly, as I said, uh, when I do my analysis. So I'll go for monthly first. So based on this monthly, this is a buy setup. And there's a dominant candle over here that has been broken through by a series of candles. So the minimum is three. So the third candle is this one, for example. So obviously I will pull my Fibonacci from here. So I will just color it um, blue. And I will only have visual it on monthly. So when I go to lower time frame, it doesn't show. OK, so based on this, this is dominant candle. It took more than three candles to break through. So this is the candle that breaks through. So that's where I put my Fibonacci. OK, oops, sorry. Let me just do it again. So let me just put it on monthly so that I don't see it on other time frames. OK, so basically, we, the market has already broke through um, the TP1. So obviously, the next point should be at uh, the TP2. OK. So that should be the, the point at which there should be a potential um, uh, engulfing over here. So engulfing, that's a, a resistance point at which it correlates to the market going up at this particular point. So we know that there's the potential of this market going up to this particular point. OK. So when we go to weekly, obviously, we have um, indications of um, zero loss buy because MR50 is below MR50. And we have uh, uh, CSM buy over here. So it has a potential of re-entry buy as well. And over at daily, the daily is still on zero loss buy because MR50 is below mid BB. And you have a CS direction, and you have a re-entry. Okay. For daily to go up, you need to have a setup on H4, which is this uh, extreme over here. And if you look at M H1, then there's a potential of a retest of the MHB over here. So let's just see because this one is still a sell setup on H1. So on Monday, let's just wait for a buy setup on H1. Let's say for example an MHB at H1. So that's when we should go for uh, for that uh, buy setup. So if I look at M15, then um, what we can do here is basically this is the, um, a much more on a, on a sell zone on M15. But let's see what happens here. If the market retraces back to this particular zone, then that's another point at which we can entry the market for, for GU. So those are the things that uh, I usually use. I usually combine um, BBMA setups and utilize uh, Fibonacci retracement to find out where the market is heading. And obviously, in order for me to have a much more solid um, analysis is obviously I have to correlate that with the support and resistance. Because if I have all of this um, analysis pointing to the same stuff, then you know that you have a much more, um, much more confidence in your entries and stuff like that. OK, so. I think that's why uh, we need to go to, uh, that's what uh, I look for on GU. So is there any other question for this session before I end the session? I was, um, OK. Let me just open another one. So I was just looking for um, USDCAD earlier on, um, on Friday night. So I know there's something that you know might worth mentioning as well. So on a monthly time frame, um, you know there's a sell uh, possibility over here. Okay. Uh, however, there's a um, setup. Uh, there's an extreme over here. There's a post potential MHP buy at uh, lower BB. So this is a particular setup of a buy setup uh, over here. So 
this week's uh, so this month is a potential CSA cable is not yet until we need to find out where the market is heading. So based on the weekly time frame, we have an MHB. So we have a head and shoulder setup. We have the shoulder over there. We have um, the head, and then we have another uh, MHB again over here. So basically, what the we need to find out what the market setting. So as uh, usual, I use this, uh, I can use my um, Fibonacci. We have a dominant candle over here. So this uh, is broken by uh, the third candle, so minimum of three candles. So I usually pull my Fibonacci based on this. And based on this, this is the the area at which this market is trying to go. So if this um, our retracement level, then obviously I will go for a sell at this particular point. But it's not going to be a sell for for swing sell. Depends. But obviously, as you can see to the to the left hand side, that there's a there's a support resistance over there. Okay, so the support resistance level uh, available for us on the left hand side of this particular market. So we know for a fact that the market is trying to test that resistance again. Okay, so those are the things that I personally look into when it comes to this. So when you're a scalper or you're an intraday trader, you know the market setting over there. So you're not going to wait until the market is there. So obviously, you can look for setups uh, on a lower time frame. So if you go to daily, then uh, you have a potential CSM. And H4 has not, doesn't have any setups available for us right now. If you look at H1, there's a potential buy re-entry over there. But I would wait until uh, low BB at some point or middle BB for re-entry because obviously at M15 there's a potential sell setup. So I would wait what happened and then uh, we can buy potentially at the lower uh, low BB H1. So there's a lot of things that uh, you can incorporate in terms of uh, BBMA but what I highly suggest is uh, basically uh, you combine uh, BBMA with support resistance because now when you have support resistance being static and you have BBMA being dynamic then you have uh, best of the two uh, two uh, types of uh, trading styles in there so it, it actually helps you to um, to build more confidence in your um, analysis so I think uh, in that sense that you know I think we'll end uh, the conference today the webinar so inshallah we can we can um, we can talk about much on the group chat, inshallah. So I think that's it for me. Thank you for listening, and it's about time, uh, the prayer time as well. So, Bilal Taufik, what is there? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And thank you so much, everybody.